Hi, Gary Hoover here. You know, I've done four startups, and each of them was created to serve the baby boomer. As a startup entrepreneur, I have to look about 20 years out in the future. It's going to take five to 10 years to get most businesses up and off the ground rolling, and then they've got to have legs. They've got to have some durability, or they ain't going to be worth anything at the end of the five or 10 years. So I've got to look about 20 years in the future. I had fallen in love with retailing, wanted to open a chain of retail stores. I'm sitting there in the 1970s trying to foresee the 80s and the 90s. And, and um, I fell in love with the idea of the superstore, big selection, low prices in a specialty category, invented by Charles Lazarus, Toys R Us, Washington, D.C., and then New Jersey, back, actually way back in the fi late 50s. I saw that concept, said I want to take the superstore to some other category. My next question is what are people going to be buying and, and in the next 20 years? I'm doing this in the 1970s, trying to foresee the 80s and 90s. Well, most economics and business goes back to demography. Who are the people? And I looked and said, hey, the baby boom. I'm one of us, one of them, over 100 million of us, uh, the best educated generation in U.S. history. More of them went to college and high school and everything than pe any previous generation by a large margin. And I said, I want to be selling whatever they're going to be buying. And when you look at a generation like that, I want to know two things. What, what's um, uh, common about that generation uh, with all previous generations. So they're probably going to, well, they went to school more than anybody else, but then they're going to get out, live in an apartment, fall in love, get married, move to the suburbs, have kids, dogs, station wagons, later minivans, you know. Um, uh, so certain things they're going to do just as they age. And then the other thing is what's unique about that generation. Most unique thing is the education level. And I think they'll be lifelong readers. I also thought they'd be into movies and music. So uh, based on just what I knew about them and being a baby boomer. So when I looked at that, I said, okay, the action in the next 20 years in retailing to baby boomers is going to be auto parts, home improvement, books, records, toys, and sporting goods. And I picked books. So it's really based on their education level and the fact they'd be having kids and wanting their kids to read. They'd be lifelong learners and encouraging learning and interest. Okay, so created the book superstore chain. Seven years later, uh, uh, Barnes & Noble bought us out and made it a big deal. Uh, then I created a company called the Reference Press, Business Reference Information. It was later renamed Hoover's, still exists today, hoovers.com. And there's, okay, now the baby boom, well, they're in their late 20s, early 30s or whatever. We're moving along. And they're going to be changing jobs, going from one company to another, so they need to know about companies. They're going to be selling stuff to companies. A lot of them are salespeople. Uh, and they're going to be buying stocks, you know, and you need to know about companies. And I'd always love knowing about companies, so, because uh, you've got to have a passion for what you're doing. So there are all these things while I study the numbers. I also had this intense passion for them. So the next thing was the um, uh, uh, Hoover's Information Service. Um, then the third idea I had was Travel Fest. I lost all my money I'd made on the first two, which were very successful because the airlines stopped paying commissions on airline tickets. But the idea that as people age, they're going to be traveling more and going overseas and going on cruises and all that was a pretty good instinct. I wouldn't want to be on the travel agency side of it again. But uh, again, aging baby boom. They're getting to the point they're going to travel more. I then, my fourth venture, the idea was a for-profit museum. And there I looked at the aging baby boom and where are they now? And I created a little video to promote that museum idea some time ago. And now I'm going to cut away to that video. And there's your little preface and little background on it. I'll see you later. Hi, I'm Gary Hoover. I try to look about 20 years out into the future to understand where the great entrepreneurial opportunities are. Today I see the baby boom, the biggest generation in American history. The peak birth years were from 1957 to 1961. So beginning next year, those people start turning 50. Over the next 20 years, from the year 2000 to the year 2020, the total number of Americans will grow by only 19%. But the number of people in their 50s will grow by 37%. The number in their 60s will grow by 89%. So what's this generation going to do in these next 20 years? First of all, they carry with them that education level, unprecedented levels of college degrees that brought the rise of the giant bookstores and helped PBS and a lot of other aspects. The museum industry has been one of the faster growing segments of the American economy. That's because of that education level. But now this generation will have more money. They'll make peak lifetime incomes as they move into their 50s and 60s. They'll have disposable income because the kids have flown the nest. And they'll have an inheritance boom. They'll also have time on their hands as they begin to retire or adopt more flexible work schedules. 
I think as they grow older, they'll seek experiences more than just things. They'll want to go fly fishing or go rock climbing. They'll want to go to symphonies and museums and restaurants. They'll want to create memories. They'll travel. I also think that they'll move more and more into nostalgia. People who are 50 and younger tend not to be very nostalgic, but by the time they're 70, most people are. That means they'll be interested in their own past, their parents, their grandparents, genealogy. They'll be interested in linking up with their roots, going to college reunions and high school reunions, joining classmates.com. They'll be tracking Antiques Roadshow. They'll be restoring old cars. They'll be in the business of looking for memories. Another important thing is that the 50s and 60s is when people become grandparents. And so you're going to have this huge generation, well-educated, time, money, grandkids to take by the hands, looking for interesting new experiences.